So I tried to add the Simpsons, but I couldn't do that because it got a copyright strike. So instead, there was an episode that I can't post, even though others are posting it, that shows about that magic flute. I'll just post a picture here. I'll leave out the magic flute ritual video because that'll get flagged too because it had music too. Just watch the fucking video and it's not as good as the original because, well, cut, can't say that, copyright, blah, blah, blah. So here you go. Unfortunately, I had to modify this video. I had done a much more detailed video and it got blocked. You know, that copyright stuff. So this will have to do. All right, you guys, this is edit number five million trillion and shit. They don't want me to post it. So I have re-edited this again. At this point, I might as well just start being a mime and showing you guys with hand signs and shit because apparently you can't show any videos, which doesn't make sense to me because I have seen these videos that I put in my video posted as recent as today. But when I put it out, it was a no way. Okay, so look, this is the best I could do. Piece it together. I know you. Here's some of my notes that I took down from 2020 on the same magic flute. The magic flute is noted for its prominent Masonic elements. This guy with the S name here and Mozart were both Freemasons, as well as that other person that you see right there, the engraver and printer of the first libretto. Yeah, I didn't read that too well, but you get the point. The magic flute is set in ancient Egypt. Its story centers around Tomino, a young prince who enters a quest to win the hand of a princess, whose name is Pomina. To marry Pomina, Tomino must undergo a series of initiation rites, symbolic of those found in Freemasonry, which tests his dedication to reason. Masonic allegory cannot be doubted. It acts, in fact, as a kind of introduction to the secret society its story celebrates the main themes of masonry, good versus evil, enlightenment versus ignorance, it's right there, and the virtue of knowledge, justice, wisdom, and truth. The queen of the night is seen by some to represent a dangerous form of, of uh, obscurantism. By others, it represents Roman Catholic. Now, it's interesting. Empress Teresa Marie banned Freemasonry from Australia. My mom's name is Teresa Marie. Ain't that something? I did a video on this about a year ago because I've been here and I've been there and I'm here still. So in San Francisco at the, the opera house, they played this once, the magic flute ritual. So Wolfgang, I love Amadeus, one of my favorite favorites. But let's skip down here. You see this? The allegorical plot was influenced, what, what does it say? Freemasonry. Yep, there you go, guys. Ta-da! Milhouse Van Houten was somebody who was always bullied on The Simpsons. But the thing was, although he was always bullied, he always made a comeback. Always. It's also interesting that his character was named after Richard Nixon. They used his middle name. Also, the history of who um, Mil Milhouse's family is. That's also interesting. But I'll let you guys look it up. On one occasion... Bart got Milhouse placed on the FBI's most wanted list, even though they are friends and tried to lure Milhouse into a cactus. Cactus. Milhouse is not always subservient to Bart in Bart Sells His Soul. 
Milhouse toyed with Bart's anxiety after Bart sold his soul for $5, and Milhouse demanded $50 to return it. On one occasion, Bart introduced Milhouse to his girlfriend and had to explain why he and Milhouse are friends, but could not come up with a good answer to admit it was due to geographical convenience. Bart did admit in Little Orphan Millie that he loves Milhouse. So Bart Simpson was the um, safety inspector at a nuclear plant. Nuclear. As above, so below. Right? That's how the saying goes. Also, it's the 33rd season.